So this is the work of, of uh, my postdoc, Alex Cartagena. He's been with me like uh, a year, and he got his PhD from Purdue, from uh, Arvin, um, I forget his last name's lab, nanotechnology lab. He's an AFM guy. Jeremy Logue is my other postdoc. He's a cancer researcher. And the two of them are working together to study cortex properties in these blebbing cells. And Claire Waterman, as I mentioned, is my um, cell biologist uh, and um, collaborator. So I already showed this slide. But so, so what I'm going to be talking more about in this talk is relevant to the right-hand side. But it's not being confined. It's just they're sort of spherical. And there's just a thin cortex. And it's basically, we're just, and we're going to be using a tipless cantilever because we're just going to um, indent a sphere. We thought about indenting a sphere with another little sphere, but that's more complicated. So we decided in the end just we won't use any tip. And I don't need that. And I already explained about the cortex, but it might be worth saying again, because in this, in this, uh, in this presentation, we're going to be applying drugs, and we're going to look at changes to polymerization of actin, changes to the activation of myosin. So we're going to be looking at differences on these spherical cells to how um, different inhibitors of myosin contraction or actin polymerization affect uh, the membrane mechanics, cortex mechanics. So these are, these are the assumptions for the contact mechanics. Um, so we have a sphere. Uh, let's just say um, think of it as just a drop to begin with. In fact, we verified the whole thing by measuring surface tension of drops. I, I'll explain that in a minute. So we have a sphere, and we're going to just indent it with a, with a flat cantilever with no tip. And we're going to assume that the sphere uh, deforms to a, a, um, the, the very small deformations we're looking at. And we're going to the sphere de deforms to a, a spheroid. And the pressure and the volume are constant in the time limit of our, you know, uh, cells can change their volume and pressure, but that happens over minutes. Our, our indentation is, you know, a few seconds. So we're not going to be changing the volume or the pressure. And we're going to neglect bending in this study, and I, I will show why we can do that later. We couldn't neglect bending when, in the previous talk. So the way we, this is the, the formulas that we use. I'll explain how we get these formulas. We measure the tension by uh, calibrating the cantilever, and the Z is the piezo distance, and the D is the deflection of the cantilever. We basically are linearizing the force displacement curve, and we get the tension of the, the cortical tension, the pressure we get from Laplace's law, and the elasticity. Um, basically, we we spread the tension over a finite layer. Here, we have to measure the thickness of the cortex, and we use a different microscopic technique to do that, and. Um, but once we have the tension and the sphere radius uh, and the thickness of the cortex, uh, we can get the elasticity of the cortex. And we're going to be applying drugs, as I said. So here, here are some of the basic formulas. The first is uh, equating uh, the volume of the sphere to a, a, pro, uh, a prolate spheroid. Um, and then just various geometric relations. Then there's the force balance 
um, including the force of the cantilever. The third equation is basically Laplace's law with a point force. These are really simple analysis. And then uh, the next formula is a deformation relating the, the change in the radius from a sphere to a, a prolate spheroid. And that's the, then we linearize that force volume curve, force distance curve, to get the tension. And this shows how we, we, t we validated the model um, by we took a we made micro drops using a pipette and we could make micro drops of water in oil so the so they would sit on the bottom of a substrate like that on glass and using the FM we wanted to see if we could measure the surface tension of the drop and uh, we know what it should be because we know that from macroscopic measurements oil and water, um, what the surface tension should be. And uh, you see the, the, red cur the red line there is our linearized part of the curve. And we got really excellent agreement, amazingly, um, to measure surface tension of a drop with AFM. I don't think anyone ever did that before. I'm not sure, though. Um, and then one of the problems is the AFM, of course, is tilted. Um, and so we were worrying about the tilt. And so we, um, we actually had a, a little plastic stage with a 10 degree tilt that would even tilt the, tilted more. And um, it didn't have a, um, you know, it didn't have a major effect. We sort of did this as a defensive maneuver because uh, in the literature, people developed AFM tips with wedges attached, so that you could re re so you had a flat um, um, approach. And I, I don't think that's really necessary. We're trying to do this as easy as you can. So. I'm going to tell you about the drugs. So these are standard drugs that cell biologists use. Uh, blebistatin means, you know, you inhibit a bleb. That's how it was, um, that's what the name means. But it, what it does, it lowers the myosin-2 contractile force. And these are just stuff, these are just stuff you add to the dish. This does not involve any transfections or anything like that. <clears throat> when we were studying the cancer cells, we were transfecting them, but I won't be talking about that. And then there's latrunculin A that inhibits actin polymerization, and calliculin A, it basically does the opposite of blebistatin. Um, so it enhances myosin-2 activity. So you would expect if you um, inhibit the myosin contractility, that the surface tension, all the mechanical properties would decrease. And if you enhanced it, they would increase. Um, and if you inhibit actin polymerization, you would expect it to also not be as stiff as before. So this is what. Uh, what the, what, so this is what we did with fibroblast cells before they um, actually, you see actually a Z section through with a confocal showing the shape of the cell on the right. So it's not completely spherical, it does attach a little, but at the top um, it's quite spherical. And um, we needed to also uh, be able to stain the membrane um, or show the, the membrane. And we used uh, wheat germ uh, gluten to see the membrane in the confocal. Um, and the force curves look more or less the same, although the linear portion is a little less obvious. But it's still, we still linearized it. and. Um, these are the cells and the flat AFM tip. 
And you can see the, the results are um, showing the different drug treatments and we could change the tension, make it go down or up depending on which drug we were using. And uh, also the pressure would follow accordingly from uh, Laplace's law. So these show the internal pressures and um, the cortical tensions that we obtained in these experiments. To, to get elasticity though, it's a little trickier because we needed to measure the cortex thickness. So you need something that <coughs> measures the actin, that's phylloidin, and then something that measures just the membrane, and that's the wheat germ. And so you can, by, and, and you, by um, using um, different filters, you can extract uh, a difference uh, in these two peaks. Uh, and, and you can get the thickness of the plasma membrane with the cortex um, that way. And you see these are a nanometer size thicknesses. And we, giving the different drugs, we could then detect differences in the thickness and can, you know, that go along with those thickness variations and, and tension variations there would be elasticity variations. So um, as expected, when you give blebostatin, the elastic modulus dropped um, by you know, a factor of two. And when we gave the opposite of blebostatin, it, it increased. And when we um, um, inhibited um, actin polymerization, it didn't do much. So, that, so it's the myosin that affected the elastic constant much more uh, than the, um, than the, it's the myosin had more effect on the actin. So this sort of summarizes uh, the results on these fibroblasts. Um, as you can see, uh, untreated cells uh, then we had increasing do uh, then we gave a, a little blebostatin and increasing doses of, of the actin inhibitor and then the um, on the right is the cal calculin A and um, what we see is that um, we could greatly modulate the uh, both the tension and the elastic modulus um, also, it had an effect on the cell radius and the cortical thickness. Um, the reason that we can neglect bending is shown um, that where it says ratio. Uh, that's the ratio of bending forces to tensile forces. So the bending effect is very, very small here. That's because we didn't use a, any tip. We needed, in the previous talk, this ratio is about one. So when you use a sharp tip, you have to worry about bending. And when you use no tip, you don't need to worry about bending. Um, and it's because of the length scale. Um, bending only becomes important when you have s very small radii of curvatures. Uh, and with, um, w with a sharp tip, you have, you have a small radius, but no tip, you don't. So um, we think that we don't need to worry about bending. So, so the point of this is that we have a new method, really, with that's minimally invasive to cells compared to other methods. Uh, we can measure the cortical elastic properties. By the way, when in the literature, people um, never said what, and they don't really talk about cortex elastic properties. They just talk about cell properties. And they may have said they're used measuring cortical elastic properties because they have small indentations. But really, our results show that the actual elasticity in the cortex is much larger than you get with a just normal indentation. It's like 
uh, you know, an order of magnitude larger or more, two orders of magnitude. So we can measure the tension, the pressure, the elastic modulus. To get the elastic modulus, however, in this method, you need to independently measure the, the thickness of the using those, uh, using microscopy and dyes. And uh, we verified this method on drops, so we can actually me measure the surface tension of a drop, I mean, with the AFM. And, and our drug uh, treatments confirm that uh, actin and myosin regulate the cortex tension and pressure, but myosin plays a more dominant role in regulating cortical elasticity. All of this is really important for understanding blebs and how cancer cells move, but that's, that's the subject of uh, yet another talk, which I'm not giving here, uh, but that's the, that's the po that my other postdoc, Jeremy Logue, is studying, is studying um, the effects of not only um, what, how, how different um, drugs affect uh, cortical mechanical properties, but also what are the signaling pathways, um, what, what molecules get there first and how that makes something else happen, and, and how it's all related to the elasticity of, the, of, the, of what it's embedded in. All of this is important for cancer research. So I'll, I'll stop there, and if you have any questions, I guess we're all hungry. <laughs>